Hey people of VC, it's Andy at Cloudy Boulder. In today's video, I am going to show you my collection of Ramones 40th anniversary box sets. Book sets, a collection of um, remastered editions that was released over the, the last few years. Uh, they've been out for, um, I think 2019 was the last that got released, and um, it's a series of uh, remastered editions that was uh, released to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the Ramones releasing their first self-titled album in 1976. Brief history, so I've been a Ramones fan since 1987, I think it was, or maybe even 88, 87, I think. I was a metalhead at the time, so punk or getting into any sort of punk music wasn't really my thing back then. It was only kind of by accident. I was on a school trip and somebody there um, commandeered the tape player, took out whatever was playing uh, in um, as background music and put in a copy of Too Tough to Die, which I think is the 1984 release, if I remember rightly. Yeah, 1984 release. And the song Warthog came on, which isn't necessarily a typical Ramon song. It's got Dee Dee Ramon singing it. But as a metalhead, that song just clicked with me. And I wanted to know who this band was um, that had eluded me for so long. And subsequently, when I came home, I went to the record store and I bought uh, this. Uh, this is my original copy of Ramon's Mania, a compilation album that had recently been um, uh, put out at the time. And um, it's got a great selection of songs from not only really the 70s, the 80s as well. <clears throat> and since then, I've just become a massive Ramones fan. I've collected all of the albums. I've got them in multiple formats, multiple editions, um, insane amount of CDs and um, everything on vinyl as well, as, as far as the studio albums are concerned. A number of bootlegs too. I've got one or two videos if you want to see a little bit more about those, if you search those out on my channel as well. They are there, um, but this video is to talk about the first five albums they released over only a two-year period, four studio albums, and um, two or three-year periods, sorry, four studio albums and a live album. Um, so let's just jump in. So I'm not going to do them in the order of the albums. Everybody, if you know the Ramones, you know the order of the albums. It's been done before millions of times. So I've kind of put them in my own order here and I'll sort of talk about why what order they're in as we go along. So I'm gonna start off with the uh the live album, It's Alive. Probably one of the best uh live albums ever recorded. It is absolutely fantastic and another great introduction to the Ramones. As you can see on here, you may not be able to read, but as you can see there are lots of song titles on here. This is a well packed uh set. Uh I'll cover the booklet in a moment, but let me just show you inside. This is a really well put together package. As you can see on the uh, left hand side, we have four CDs, and on the right hand side, we have a pocket for not one but uh, two records with great live shots on them from the gig. Now, the It's Arrive album itself was recorded at the Rainbow Theatre in London, December the 31st, 1977. So it was a New Year's Eve gig. And the other, uh, so that's all, that's the LP, but also disc one of the CDs. The three other CDs are um, taken from shows from the three days before. So at Top Rank, Birmingham, December 28th, 77. Victoria Hall, Stoke-on-Trent, December 29th, 77. And at uh, Friars at Aylesbury, Buckinghamshire, December the 30th, 1977. So they had three warm-up shows before they went into the one that was recorded for the official album. By all accounts, uh, so Ed Stasium, who produced the album, he met up with the band uh, just before um, doing uh, recording of the, the live shows. And the band were uh, bored out of their minds. They decided to spend Christmas in England, and they thought probably thought it would be an absolute hoot uh, spending it in a foreign country. But... Back in the 70s and, and even the 80s as well, Britain pretty much shut down over Christmas. Nothing was open at all. So they were stuck in their hotel, basically picking their noses and, and wondering what to do themselves. So by the time it came to do the gigs, they had all this pent-up energy and uh, they really 
and blasted out and put on one hell of a show. Considering they, uh, this is what 1979 uh, release and the gig was in uh, 77 and they'd had three albums out already. This is effectively a greatest hits of those first three albums. And it is, given they'd only had three albums out in the course of what, 18 months, two years, it is a better greatest hits than many bands achieve over a much longer, longer career. Um, the, the set this is from the opening uh song of rockaway beach uh it's got everything on here i mean i'm literally really i would read out the track listing for the first three albums so i'm not going to do that but um the uh the vinyl is heavyweight heavyweight vinyl i'm uh every one of these sets i show has got uh black vinyl 180 gram i think it is on uh the Sire label. This is the uh, reproduction. You probably see that today. Reproduction of the original label. Uh, so I'm not going to take out any more albums and show them as they go along because they all kind of look the same, other than the writing on them. Uh, the booklets are really good as well. They are sort of LP size booklets with lots of uh, fantastic uh, photos. In this case, it's lots of photos from the live shows. Uh, has track listings and lyrics in some cases not in not in this one there's too many songs really on here to to list all the lyrics uh, the write-ups in here are really good as well they generally have a write-up by um, a renowned uh, music critic or uh, producer this one has a write-up by uh, Steve Albini who talks about uh, what a massive influence the Ramones were on his career and there's also always a bit of a, a write-up from um, Ed Stasian as well who produced the album and was heavily involved in the uh, the remixes as well. Um, whereas the other albums in this series are um, you know full-on remixes of the album um, and even changes to it as well you know um, Ed Stasen has taken, you know, uh, he's taken on board himself to maybe change things up from his the original discussions he may have well have had with the band about how they may have well improved things after the release. Um, it's Alive is uh, really just an, the original album uh, remastered, so it's across two LPs. A killer, killer album. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, next up, this is their second studio album, Leave Home, that uh, was released in 1977, not long after the release of their self-titled debut. Uh, the cover is much to be desired. In fact, in the booklet for Leave Home, um, as well as Ed Stasian's uh, recording notes, uh, Danny Fields, who I think was one of the artistic directors um, uh, of the band, great shots in here as well. He spends most of his writing talking about what an awful cover it is and not about what a, a great album it is. Um, so the 14 songs on here are literally the the next 14 songs the Ramones have written. By all accounts, they had most of the songs of the first three albums written before they even recorded the first one. And the albums are recorded in the order that the band wrote the songs because Johnny Romero wanted to show the progression the band was making as they were uh, going along. Um, this one has does have lyrics in it as well as you know, a few live shots and uh, marketing shots, promo shots of the band. And the write-ups, I say, are really good, well worth uh, reading through those. So what do you get with leave home you get the same sort of layout cds on the left three cds this side and the uh remastered uh 40th um anniversary mix they call it on here on um on the left hand side housing holly wine sleeve as well um the 40th anniversary mix sounds amazing um all of these do they've done such a good job in not trying to make the album sound particularly different but in some cases things sound a little bit richer um 
the guitar is maybe a bit more defined. Uh, it's it's just really well done. You can you get a comparison on CD one that gives you the uh, the remastered original mixes and the fortieth anniversary mix that's also on the LP. Uh, CD two contains bonus material. CD three is a live show at uh, CBGB New York. Fourth uh, of February, nineteen seventy-seven. Um, it's a good live show. But, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of live shows from the Ramones in the seventies, so they all kind of merge into one after a while. Um, what's really good on these releases is the, the the bonus material. What lets this one down actually is they've been a little bit lazy, I think, in. Um, so first off, we have the Sun Dragon Rough Mixes, which is the full album um, with a couple of extras as well. Um, a couple of extras being, or one extra being uh, Babysitter. Now, Babysitter was a, um, a, I think it might have been a, a B-side, but on the original album, Carbon and Not Glue, when it was released, uh, they ran into a potential lawsuit issue because Carbona is a was a registered trademark and they didn't want to get into trouble. So on the US pressing, they replaced Carbona Not Glue with Sheena is a Punk Rocker and on the UK version, they replaced it with uh, Babysitter. And Babysitter appears on the bonus materials. The Sun Dragon Rough Mixes are the first rough mixes that were taken um, at the, uh, the time the album was recorded. And the second half of CD2 is uh the 40th anniversary extras and there are some interesting things on here and there are some um throwaway tracks which are kind of you hear them once you think yeah okay that was interesting uh but you probably wouldn't play too many of these as well there are uh single versions of um of some songs there are b-side uh there's i don't care b-side version um the uk album version of babysitter uh, things like bubblegum mixes, soda machine, machine mixes, Forest Hills mix, psychedelic mix. Uh, one interesting one is uh, is Pinhead, the ooh ooh gabba uh, mix. Now at the end of Pinhead, there's kind of like a voiceover with Dee Dee and uh, Joey, just kind of talking rubbish, really. And this is a a full track of all of that, everything they did, and they basically just picked out little bits and stuck it at the end of uh, the original. Uh, pinhead but what they what they've done here is the timings are all wrong on this one here they've said it's pinhead psychedelic mix and pinhead ooh, ooh gabba uh, mix for example they're both listed at 244 which is the length of the original track these aren't the lengths of the remix tracks they've just someone's just looked at it and thought well that's that's pinhead 244 244 um and it's only a minor attention to detail but you know this is the 40th anniversary mix i, th I really wish they would have Gone that extra mile and just double check everything. Uh, there are TV tracks on here, and there are various uh, mixes, um, but it's 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 good. Um, it's not my favourite. I say it's not my favourite Ramones album. I love the first one, and um, Rocket to Russia is probably one of my favourite ones. I'm going to show that one up in a minute. But um, you know, give me give me shock treatment. Carbon not glue. Susie a headbanger. Pinhead. Swallow My Pride, California Stone, Commando. Yeah, it's a great album. Next up, I'll show the fourth studio album. Now, Tommy Ramone had uh, decided that he, the touring and the infighting and the personality stuff was all too much for him. And while he remained friends with the band, he decided he, wanted, he really liked the uh, technical side of things better. So he kind of moved upstairs and was much more involved in the production. Uh, Mark Bell, Marky Ramone, came in on drums and uh, spent the time with uh, Tommy to learn the Ramone style. Everything had to be done in a Ramone style. It wasn't Marky Ramone coming in and putting his own um, <clears throat> it, putting his own influences into it. Although he may well have done that musically, but in terms of technique and style, he had to play the old Ramone stuff and he had to play it exactly as it was meant to be played. Again, it's a single LP version and three bonus discs. We'll come to the booklet in a second. Let's open it up. Very yellow and black. Again, we have the LP uh, housed nicely in here, a polyline sleeve. Uh, CD1 is two versions of the album. The first up, uh, the remastered original mixes, 
and the 40th anniversary road revisited mix uh, cd2 is rough mixes and 40th anniversary extras uh, i've got the hype sticker uh, just in here and the uh, third one is a, another live uh, at the Palladium this time, New York, uh, 31st of December 1979. Let's put the hype sticker up there. So what do you get on the bonus material here? Uh, there's two great tracks on here that uh, were part of the original recording session but never made it to the album. I Walk Out. It's a fantastic Ramones song. Such a shame that one didn't make it onto the uh, the album. I probably would have put it in against something like Needles and Pins, but um, Needles and Pins was obviously a, a great uh, favourite of the band. And SLUG Slug um, was one I think they found. The, they had to piece that one together in order to put it on um, this uh, release in terms of they had sort of um, the backing track and then the vocal tracks and sorted it all out. But uh, SLUG is a real sort of punk and roll uh, song, the way that only the Ramones can do. Um, most of these are basic rough mixes, but there's a few backing track mixes. And at the end, questionably, Needles and Pins of Don't Come Close, we get uh, acoustic versions. The worst thing on here really is I Want to Be Sedated, Ramones on 45 mega mix. Um, it's, it's as good as it sounds. <coughs> the booklet. Again, superbly well done. Great stories in here. The uh, contributors to this one are um, Roy uh, Roy Tracking, who I believe is a uh, music journalist. I don't know much about him. And uh, John Holstrom, the guy responsible for the uh, the artwork on the cover. Good iconic cover that one. I do like that one. And of course uh, Ed uh, Stadium as well. This is a great shot with uh, the five Ramones. Marky obviously added in, but Tommy clearly still part of the, the fold. And uh, lyrics and track listings and credits as well. Fantastic album. Now onto my favorite of the 70s albums. That's Rocket to Russia. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to deny the fact that it's my probably my favorite one because it was the first studio album I bought after I bought uh, Ramones Mania. Uh, this was the one that I won out and got uh, first, uh, followed probably by um, Too Tough to Die. But uh, again, we have the uh, 40th anniversary deluxe edition, one LP, three discs. Back after Leave Home the iconic uh, Ramones against the brick wall uh, type cover. Booklet, again we'll come to that in a second. Uh, let's have a look at what's on the CDs. The uh, album, again, polyline sleeved, was nicely on the left hand side. Uh, pipe sticker, which isn't going to focus. Disc one, as with the others, we have the remastered original mixes and the 40th anniversary tracking mix. Disc two, we have uh, bonus materials, the uh, media sound power station rough mixes and 40th anniversary extras. And uh, disc three, live at the Apollo Center in Glasgow, Scotland, 19th of December, uh, 1977. Another 25 tracks uh, live, um, which is a really, really good show. Uh, I have to say, I really enjoyed listening to that one. Um, let's go through the 40th anniversary extras on here. Um, so the first half of disc two, we're looking at the Media Sound Power Station rough mixes. Um, <clears throat> Why is it that all this way has alternative lyrics? Uh, Ramona has alternative lyrics. Um, that's they're really good actually, and well worth listening to to that one. <clears throat> and uh, I don't care is a slightly different version as well. Um, 40th anniversary extras we've got a few acoustic versions um, we have a sweet little Ramona pop mix of Ramona that's actually really well done we have some backing tracks Creek and Hop um, uh, this, this is quite good the Joey RTR radio spot promo where Joey Road is introducing the album and they're just 
snippets of a few songs on there. That's really good. And the Weary Happy Family, Joey and Dee Dee dialogue. Again, at the end of Weary Happy Family, where Joey and, uh, and Dee Dee are just ad-libbing, you know, where are my socks? Where's my underwear? This is a full-on 1 minute 13 of all of that, all of the things they did. And then they kind of just picked out maybe sort of two or three seconds to, to put at the end of the official song. Uh, again, not something you listen to a lot, but really fun to listen to all the dialogue that they had to choose uh, compared to what they actually chose in the at the end of the day. I uh, mentioned the uh, the live version at um, uh, at Glasgow. And what's interesting about the 40th anniversary track in the mix is, um, so She Knows a Punk Rocker was included in the original album. As I said, that was included on sort of the, the repress of Leave Home to replace Cardboard and Not Glue. It was rushed out as a, sig a single between Leave Home and Rocket to Russia because um, Seymour Stein, the head of Cy Records, loved that song so much he just saw them go out and um, just, just release that as a single. So it wasn't part of the original uh, Media Sound Power Station rough mixes uh, recorded for this album. So Ed Stasium here, um, in putting this together, has taken out Sheena as a punk rocker from this and replaced it with It's a Long Way Back to Germany and also replaced I Don't Care with... Um, Yeah, with uh, an alternative version as well. So that's kind of a bit weird listening to the album through. And Sheena is a punk rock is not there. And it's a long way back to Germany. But it's also really familiar at the same time because it's such a great song and fits in because it was written and recorded at the same time. fits in uh, so, so well. Let's have a look at the booklet. Killer live shots. The write-ups in here are provided by... Um, forget uh yeah i don't know that guy jan Ultsky. never heard of him must be some probably some sort of critical either but it's good it's it's a good reflection of the ramones uh from his perspective uh the lyrics in here look very much like the inner sleeve of the original uh copy that i've got or the repressing i've got from a, an 80s repress uh Shots of the band. This is the Ed Stasium uh, write-up about what happened at uh, the Media Stand Studios and how they put the album together. Um, a picture with so there's uh, Seymour Stein, um, his wife Linda, who was uh, one of the managers of the band, and uh, Alton John in there as well. Um, uh, we have sort of track listings and. Uh, credits as well. So my favourite Ramones uh, studio album, uh, without a doubt. Now, um, oh, I'll fall down. Okay, uh, the last one. The I'm not showing this one because it's it's my favourite, although it is an absolutely fantastic, iconic album. But uh, this one uh, is still sealed. I must have had this one for well over a year now. For some reason, I've not thought to open it. Um, I think part of the reason was I have versions of this and the sort of the unique selling point of this one is the LP, the 40th anniversary version of this is a mono mix. Um, but um, yeah, uh, I just thought, well, I've not really had a chance to, uh, I, I don't know if that really didn't, how should I say this, how I wasn't that bothered by a mono mix but um having pulled out the others this week and listened to the bonus materials i want to crack this open and give the bonus materials a uh, a good listen so here we go this is how they all came in the shrink with a hype sticker in the bottom left um it's been a long time in coming so let's uh crack it open So oh, here we go. This is my first look, so I'll share it with you. Uh, iconic cover, Ramones 40th Anniversary Deluxe Edition, uh, limited edition to 19,760. I think that's bigger than some um, band's um, normal runs, that alone limited edition. Inside, familiar layout, black and white in keeping with the... Um, 
uh, with the others, the, the series of albums. Um, CD1, we have the uh, stereo um, remix of the album, uh, remaster of the album, and the 40th anniversary mono version. Disc 2, we have single mixes, outtakes, and demos. I'll go into those, into those in a little bit more detail uh, after this. And um, uh, disc 3 is a, uh, the live one, live at the Roxy, Hollywood, um, California, 12th of uh, August 1976. Another 32 songs. Um, amazing. Given the fact that they'd only had one album out with what 14 songs on it they did a 32 track set obviously there are uh, some covers on here as well but when Ramones do covers they make them their own now there will be a booklet in here as well let me just pull that in fact before we do that let's have a look let's see what will be interesting about the uh, single mixes outtakes and demos there's a couple of versions of Blitzkrieg Bop, stereo and modern mono versions. Same with I Want to Be a Boyfriend. Um, oh, Today You'll Love Tomorrow the World, original uncensored vocals. That's going to be interesting to hear. Uh, demos of a few other tracks. In fact, most of the other tracks, demos. Yeah, the rest is all demos from uh, songs that are on the album. So that'll be worth checking out. And the live show too. Oh, in fact, there's not 32 songs on the live. I've just seen here there are, there are two different sets. There's set one and set two, uh, 14, 16 tracks on each of them. So um, looking forward to giving those a listen. Now I'm in the mood. Uh, let's take a look at the booklet. So you have the, um, looks like the original uh, film roll taken from the iconic cover. Who does the write-up in here? What a great photo of Jerry and there. Oh, I love that. Um, obviously, I've not read this one yet. I'll, look, I'll dive in and uh, look at that. As I say, I originally got this one because I thought, well, that would be it would be great to have, and I'm not really going to play it. But now I've got into the others and listened to the, the remixes and the uh, the outtakes and the demos and the extra stuff. I'm 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 well into uh, actually chucking this on and giving it a go. Uh, so this is this write ups by Craig Leon um, in 2016. Uh, I'm sure the article will, um, will will go into a bit more detail about who he is. We have uh, lyrics as well, um, and uh, the dawn of the Ramones. In fact, this is the Ed Stasium uh, article. Oh, it's not. It's uh, by Mitchell Cohen. There isn't an Ed Stasium writer in this one. Okay. All right. Well, plenty to read. Plenty to learn more. Um, there's plenty of Ramones biographies out there, so it's kind of difficult to come up with uh, new angles, I think, to um, explain the background of the Ramones. Um, before we finish up, one more thing to show. Not really part of this series, but uh, an excellent book nonetheless. This is Martin Popoff's uh, Ramones at 40, with a forward by C.J. Ramone. This covers their full career um, all the way through. Uh, to up until well, I say the, their full career, but it, it does cover up the period up to 2014 where um, unfortunately they started uh, losing Ramones. Their induction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Um, I mean, if you're one of those people that uh, Ramones is the 70s Ramones, and that's it for you. You didn't go anywhere after. Uh, I would thoroughly recommend you look into some of the 80s stuff and even even the 90s stuff. Uh, even when Dee Dee Ramone left, he needed money. He still wrote songs for the band, even though he wasn't playing with them anymore. Um, they are well worth checking out. I think the, the whole catalogue is uh, is fantastic to hear. Uh, the, the progression of the band from start to finish, even through the, the difficult years. Uh, Shalot, I uh, didn't expect to go for 30 minutes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed going through those. I certainly enjoyed um, flicking through them and listening to them all this week. And I'm going to go away and uh, listen to that uh, debut album, Mono and All. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think with the Ramones. Do you have a story with them? Uh, what's your favourite album? Do you have any of these box sets? What do you think of them? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you soon.